Hi, my name is Gudrun from GE Designs. Welcome to my quilting chat, Tipsy Tuesday. Hi everybody, and thank you for being here with me on a Cinco de Mayo, May 5th. I'd like to especially welcome all of the Hope Quilters the, those that participated in my Hope Quilt Along. And if you're brand new to my Tipsy Tuesday show, welcome, welcome, happy to have you here. Uh, make sure to tell us your name and where you're tuning in from in the comments. Now on today's show, we will of course recap our Hope Quilt Along that took place this last Sunday, May 3rd. I have prepared a massive slideshow for you uh, to show some of the finished Hope Quilts while well, some of them were just kind of laid out, but I tried to collect as many photos as possible. Of course, not possible because there are so many and so we are going to have enough for a few Hope show, quilt, um, slideshows. I will also show you the final results of our fundraising. I actually went this morning and dropped off our donations and my heart is so full right now. I've been kind of floating on air all day and um, just experiencing it firsthand how our efforts are going to help so many. I'm here to answer all your questions tonight. So um, make sure to post them in the comments if you're watching on whatever topic. I decided that this show needed to be a totally Q&A show. So since we have lots of new viewers that maybe don't know me as well as those of you that have been watching uh, from the start. So now is your chance to ask me anything. Now please use your thumbs up and hearts if you're on a mobile device. Of course, this video is shareable if you would like to share the love and hope with all of your friends. Uh, that really helps us get our videos out there and that's the best way to support us that way. Now let's check in and see who is with us tonight. We are having a little hard time. I think it's a Facebook thing. It's it's uh, we've got the spinning wheels trying to get to our get to our um, comments. But um, let's see if we can get there. I know you're here, so um, we can see you're here. But I guess we can't get to the comments. So I'm just gonna trust that you're here from all over. <laughs> Okay, so uh, we always have a giveaway. At the end, we actually have two giveaways. We pick one live winner from our comments, so the more you comment, the better your chances. And then we have a question at the end, so those of you that will be watching this after the fact, after we go off live, maybe tomorrow, for example, some of our European friends are already in bed, um, you can always answer the giveaway question at the end and be entered in our second part of our giveaway. So on our last show, which was last week, I asked you a, a giveaway question, which was kind of fun. It was barefoot shoes or socks. And that of course pertains to when you're sewing. And so our winner from last show is Miss Lenora Freeman. And she sews in shoes. So congratulations, Lenora. You will have received a $25 gift card to the GE Design Store. I am so thrilled how our hope day turned out and um, I actually am breaking a little bit of a rule. You know, those of you that have been following me for a while know that I have a Facebook group called Goodrun's Quilt Crew and I have a live show there every Friday at 3 p.m. Central Time where I started off with showing you a cocktail and sipping on it and giving you the recipe. It's kind of my hobby. So since it was Cinco de Mayo, I'm breaking rules because I decided to make a margarita for me and Mr. Honey Producer. And it was kind of one of those things. We've been running around all day and so we were a last minute of getting everything ready for the show. I had six minutes, six minutes before going live and I said, do I have time to make a margarita? He said, you got six minutes. So I did and I made it. Cheers, everybody. I made my grapefruit margarita that actually the recipe is in my mixology book, Stripology Mixology book. And so I had time. Cheers, everybody. Happy Cinco de Mayo. Yes. That is definitely Cinco de Mayo flavor. So refreshing. So um, I hope you're having a great, great Tuesday. Like I said, I had such a magical feeling on Sunday after our whole full day of sewing 
and uh, all of your comments, all of your messages just really meant everything to me. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Of course, at the end of the day, I felt like I had just ran a marathon, my second one in five weeks, because remember the Elvira quilt along. Now, and just like the old days, when I used to run those kinds of races, I kind of had that wonderful runner's high afterwards, that high where you, all your endorphins are just kicking around your body. And I believe it was because I knew we were gonna be able to help so many people. Um, so not only how I was able to help you get through the pattern, everybody was so happy and sewing and joyful, um, but also how it had a second compounding effect with all of your donations and we're going to be able to help so many. So I'd love to hear what were your favorite, what was your favorite part of the day if you participated in the Hope Quilt Along. I'd love to hear in the comments what was your favorite. So um, our total, our total, we're actually over it because we're still collecting donations. I'm, I'm going to try and um, deliver some more money to these organizations later. So we're gonna leave it open for a, few, a little while. But our total this morning, when I wrote my checks, was $35,000. Amazing, amazing. So I don't, was able to donate to the three organizations eleven thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars and uh that just was beyond beyond my wildest dreams so uh thank you thank you thank you you know all i can all i can go by is how many purchased the pattern and so uh, we had over six thousand people that purchased the pattern and participated in, from over 24 countries and I really appreciate that because yes, I understand those charities were local to me, uh, but I thank you all so much for being a part of it. Now, before I play the slideshow for you, I wanted to show you my block. So I, I did finish all my blocks as you saw on my design wall and I started playing with a little more that night and last night. I tried a couple of layouts. I loved some of the some of you that were doing the heart strings layout. So let me show you. I did try that with box, and um, I liked it, but it wasn't really working for my fabric. So I think the one that I'm going to end up with this is what it is at this moment design wall I did X's and O's and I think that works really well for those fabrics and it kind of gives a little 3d effect kind of because of my strips are different shades of that chartreuse green so I think that's 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 the winner what do you think um, and then I saw just before we went live I saw Miss Pat Sloan had posted her finished quilt She went outside and took some gorgeous photos of her quilt top. So let's show, show let, let me show you her quilt. This turned out so awesome. I really love that um, Kind of magenta Violet, I don't know what is that color? Um, in her accent as her accent color with that really fun colorful uh, other fabrics so Thanks, Pat, again, for joining us and being with us. Now, of course, all of the videos are on YouTube and Facebook, and they will be there forever. So whenever you need to make another one, you can always go back to the videos. The pattern is still available for purchase. As I said, I'm going to collect donations at least for another couple of weeks and see if we can support these charities some more. So did you pick up some tip or technique that was new to you on Sunday? I would love to hear what was your favorite tip if you picked up something that you hadn't heard before. Um, I also, one of my favorite things that I saw and I've been seeing afterwards is how many of you were watching my live, but you were also staying connected with your sewing friends. There were so many of you that I know were either connecting with your friends on Zoom or FaceTime as you were sewing and still watching me live. And I, th I thought that was wonderful. Some people were able to be in person, family members. And so I found some photos on Facebook. I know there's so many more of you that did that, but um, I just wanted to show you some of the friends that were hanging out and, and um, 
sewing together. I love this one with all the puppies. Yes, there were a lot of puppy pictures. There were a lot of cat pictures. Um, some, some pets were not too happy with mommy working, um, mommy and daddy working so hard. And we got this one, family from North Dakota. Love that. And then kids, I love the involvement of the kids. And so look at those adorable girls. And then uh, these guys are just the cutest. That's an awesome quilt in the background. Um, a great hope in, in progress. And uh, just having a good old time. Look, you know, we were all connected even though we weren't together. So I just, I just love that fact. And of course, another one with the next generation. Involving the kids is the best thing. And then we got the sisters um, having a good old time. Hadn't been in the same room, I think, for weeks. So that was wonderful to see. So thank you all and um, keep sending those photos. They're just so much fun. But let's check out some hope quilts. I have prepared a slideshow. Yes, it's a lot of quilts. So we had to speed it up quite a lot so that it wouldn't take half an hour. So they're gonna be fast, but they're gonna be fun. So let's check out some of the hope quilts made on Sunday.
Wasn't this amazing? I just love all those quilts and I know there are so many more in progress so I can't wait for you to post more photos and so we can put together another set of probably a couple more uh, slideshows. But I'm seeing your comments now. Um, I'm just seeing them on my phone, but I wanted to read you this one. I'm sure you're seeing them as you're watching, but this one just, I love this one from Michelle. Um, because of your demos and teaching, I was able to finally understand how to follow a pattern. Also, after trying for so long to try quilting, the game changer is your stripology rulers. Thank you for helping me carry on my mother and grandmother's passion. I think that's beautiful and it's so true. I've heard this from so many beginners that they were going to give up on quilting, but then they found the rulers and everything made sense and everything became so much more enjoyable. So that was really great. I see a lot of the tips, um, favorite tip was the stickers on squaring up and how to square up with the different tools. Uh, so that was, that was fun to see. Now, uh, I, of course, like I said, started my morning off really early, uh, delivering some money. So I started off with the Girl Scouts. They asked that all the donations would go through their website because you can uh, go right to that cookies for cause and place your donation. And so I put a donation of 11,750, um, dollars. And I just wanted to show you what popped up on my screen after I did my donations. And so if you want to know how many boxes of cookies we bought, let me see, I got to do the math. Um, it was, 2,350 boxes of cookies will now go to school kids, healthcare workers, uh, first responders, truck drivers, all of those that are essential workers that are working so hard to keep, to keep everybody going, to keep everybody safe. So um, that was my start of the morning and that cute little message that I got for the donation was awesome. So then I went to St. Paul and met up with Brian Ingram from Hope Breakfast Bar and Justin Sutherland that represents chefs um, Feed the Front Lines. And we met at Hope because they know each other. They're both amazing chefs, actually uh, celebrity chefs, if you look them up. And uh, just amazing people for doing these kinds of things. And of course, Mr. Honey Producer, he documented it and put together this um, little video, but I want to tell you first. So I was able to donate 11,750 to each cause. What really touched my heart was that Justin told me that they were doing the Feed the Front Lines. They had a um, GoFundMe campaign that they had, they had requested $30,000. They were a little short of it. So last week they were running out of money so they were gonna end the program because they had no more money and that day we emailed him and told him what we were gonna do and what how much we were gonna donate so they are gonna keep going with our money for at least a couple more weeks and I just think that's so amazing and that really touched my heart but um, check out the video about to go give some money away. Help a lot of people. From all the quilters, all over the world, all my friends. They all pitched in and made hope. Created hope. So now we're gonna go give hope away.
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's totally a tearjerker for me because, but my heart is so full. I'm so proud of all of you to go on this journey and join in with me. So, um, and so excited about the fact that they will be helping so many people. Now I have to say, as we pulled up, so whole breakfast bar said the same thing. They didn't know when they started this out, outreach po program, they didn't know how long they were going to last. They thought it would maybe a couple of weeks, but they've been going strong for almost six weeks and now they're going to keep on going. And I think that's amazing. They also get uh, food donations from, from uh, the big distributors. Uh, and then they kind of just figure out what they can cook with that. And I think that's awesome. Uh, but, they just started their, they started, they haven't done any carry out uh, or delivery of like special order from their restaurant. And they just started that this weekend. So as we pulled up, we hadn't eaten. So we went ahead and placed our order online for breakfast. So we got some breakfast to take home and it was amazing so so good if you love if you like pancakes if you're in the st paul minneapolis area do it they are so quick and it's so cool how they do things um they also have a setup outside that people can just walk up so it's kind of like a farmer's market kind of um just table they have set up so whatever they have that they have a lot of that they're not going to use in making the food like they had gotten a lot of um eggs uh in uh so prepared egg things and then today they also had a lot of potatoes so they set it out so anybody can come up and walk up and get what they need so uh on top of that the food was amazing so i i can't wait until i can go in person and sit in the restaurant and uh, support them and justin's restaurants as well so it was just it was really amazing something I'll, I'll cherish forever so really really great um now i said that i would answer some questions oh i have to tell you one thing and i was going to show you but i left it downstairs in the fridge so one of the things on the menu, because Minnesota got a Minnesota restaurants got they've got a special permit to be able to sell um, like beer and cocktail kits to for people to take home because of COVID. And so they have a mimosa kit uh, at Hope Breakfast Bar. They also have beer, specialty beer, and they uh, have I believe uh, yeah they have a Bloody Mary mix and stuff like that. And so I bought a bottle of bubbly because it's a hope champagne so i have to show you the bottle i'll show you on friday i won't use it until friday but uh it's really cool because it says it's it, the name of the the champagne is hope so i think it's the coolest thing so um let's dive into some questions i just quickly before we went live uh posted a photo a question on uh, post on Goodness Cook Crew and asked you to post some questions. So I grabbed some questions from there really quickly right before we went live. But if you have other questions, I have um, your comments up on my phone so I can see them coming. And so please ask, ask any questions. But let me just answer some of those that you had posted in the crew. So uh, one question was regarding the Asian pasta salad that I, Asian noodle salad that I posted the recipe for the Hope um, so along. Now, how many of you made that? 
Wasn't that delicious? And one person asked me, do you toss it with all the salad dressing in the beginning or do you store it without being tossed? Um, and so you can do it either way. So if you know you're gonna have leftover and wanna save it, of course it's gonna last longer without the dressing. But for me, when I make it for my family, it, this thing gets devoured so fast. So I toss the whole thing with the dressing. It's like the perfect dish to take to, um, you know, potlucks and summer gatherings, of course, who knows if we're gonna even have those, but <laughs> um, at least around your family. So that, that's a perfect one for that. Um, and the other one was, so sometimes oh, somebody's asking me when you design, are there, does it always work out or are there sometimes where a design doesn't work out? What are, what are the challenges? Of course, of course it is. Um, so sometimes when I'm designing, I have an idea in my head and then, uh, I go, I design in kind of three different ways. Sometimes I have a fully formed idea that I just go to the computer and draft the pattern and it's ready to go. Sometimes it's a technique and an idea, so I have to try it, actually sew in it. And those are the ones that sometimes just don't work out. And then third is, you know, I have the pattern ready and then I have a color idea and I start working on it and I don't like it. Um, that doesn't usually happen. I usually just go with it and, and it turns out great. Um, so uh, second, third question was, do you sleep? <laughs> Sometimes I do. Yes, I do. Uh, not a lot. I've never really needed a lot of sleep. So that brain just starts going and I have to get up and move. Um, and then I was asked about if I have any other hobbies than sewing and quilting. Of course, it used to be my hobby first before it became my profession, but it still is uh, my hobby, I should say. I, I'm never happier than when I can actually piece and sew, which is unfortunately when it's your business, it's not all the time, especially now. It's been a while. So I actually, last night, late last night, no, not late, I, yeah, dinner time, I just excused myself and said I need to go to my sewing room. And so I sewed uh, all the blocks for one of the new quilts that's coming out. Um, a second version. I just had to get some sewing therapy and that's just something the best, the best therapy. Um, okay, and then the next question connects to that. When are my new patterns coming out? So with the whole COVID situation and I, as many of you know, I travel and teach all over the world uh, nonstop. And so we are always kind of have these deadlines tied to International Quilt Market, which is our trade show, which is in May and then in October. So we usually new releases are tied around that. And I had a release, a uh, product release plan for the beginning of the year that has been severely altered. A uh, couple of reasons. For example, many of you may know that I was planning on putting out a book, a Stroll in Paris book, uh, but that one, I decided to put on hold for a little bit because uh, quilt shops are not, some, many of them are still closed or not operating at full at full capacity and, and this was kind of geared toward the shops. So I am still gonna do it, it's just gonna wait a little bit. I decided to switch the book that I was planning for fall and I'm moving that one up. So there will be a book coming, hopefully summer. I'm already working on it. And the new patterns will be available, will be coming out in the next few weeks. This week is where I'm determined to finish off those, uh, that work on those. So that's coming. Um, let me see if you have questions that you're posting here. Um, how long have I been quilting? I have been quilting since my early 20s. And so, uh, do I have to tell you how many years that is? <laughs> Just a few years. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, and, and the quilting and the design actually brought me to the States from Iceland. Now, Karen is asking, my second hope will use the accent fabric. Would you get more use of the yardage cutting uh, length of fabric rather than width of fabric? Oh, for the strips. I, no, the best use of the fabric is actually cutting the 15 inch strips and then sub cutting them into the two and a half. That's the best use of the fabric. All right. Do your, do your kids have the quilt bug? Uh, one question live. Do my quilts have the quilt bug? Kids. My kids. 
<laughs> my kids have the quilt bug. My quilts. <laughs> my, my quilts are my kids. Uh, my kids have all made a quilt. And uh, they're all very creative. And my daughter, I definitely will be a quilter, I think. She she does some things, but she's still only 19, so it's it's she's busy with college, but I think definitely she will be a quilter. Uh, they're all very interested in the quilting. My oldest son has actually done a little bit more, and he liked to, when in college, he I gave them all, they all have sewing machines. How many did you have? <laughs> I have three kids. I have three kids uh, and a grandkid. And so he actually wanted his sewing machine when he was in his, I think, fourth year, third or fourth year of college. He wanted to take it to school because he wanted to mend his clothes and alter his clothes and stuff like that. So uh, there it is. But he, he, he loves it and he loves everything about it. They are all very into what I do. And uh, of course, now the two that are at home now, uh, they are right now cutting some bundles and folding fabric. So it's all good. Um, all right how are how are my new patterns coming along <laughs> they are coming along good now i have to say uh talking about these new pattern release now these two sew alongs have kind of thrown a little wrench in things because and th that was one of the questions i saw on facebook is my pattern design process how long does it take and um i think i'm different from very many designers that process is sometimes very very quick uh, from an idea to a finished pattern can sometimes be really quick it, if it just all falls in place. And so those of you that participated in the Elvira quilt, that one came together really quick. I actually had an idea. I had been testing it and this was like days before I was going to announce the pattern. And then I tested it and I wasn't liking what was it what was turning out and I had to sleep on it. I woke up early the next day and started fiddling on the computer and I came up with the Elvira as it ended up being and sometimes it just needs to rest up there uh, same thing kind of with hope and neither of those were planned for a new release the, those are both brand new patterns that just kind of became and I, sometimes those are the best honestly uh, so hope uh, started out as an idea I was only gonna do one block and I played with it and I was just trying different things and mm, didn't turn out. And then I had the idea of doing an alternate block so that you wouldn't have to match any seams and stuff. And that's when the light bulb moment came and, and all of the rest of it was history. So uh, those two will be uh, published in a paper pattern this, um, this end of this month. So it wasn't a plan a couple of months ago, but I want to release them because I know a lot of shops um, participated and one offered in their store. So that will, those two will be available, but there's going to be two more, two more. How did I come up with the idea for stripology rulers? Uh, that was, so I, I, I worked with creative grids. As you know, I used some of their rulers for some of my patterns and I was never much of a specialty ruler kind of a girl because I lived in Iceland and I didn't want to design a pattern where you, I needed to wait a month to get the specific ruler I wanted to use. So I always started designing using just basic tools, but I've been cutting strips for forever since I almost started quilting. I started cutting my leftovers into strips. So I've been designing strip patterns for a really, really long time, way before the jelly rolls and all that, two and a half inch strips. And so um, when Creator Grids came to me and wanted me to develop a ruler, I knew I wanted to do something that you could use for whatever you're doing. So not just very specific specialty things. So uh, with the Creative Grids technology, with their grip on the backside, and their accuracy in their rulers, I knew we could make an amazing slit ruler. You know, there were other slit rulers out there, but they were very inaccurate and flimsy and did not really have all the markings that I c could envision, um, just really being a game changer. So it kind of all came together and we worked on it and played with it and added stuff. And um, yeah, there it was. All right, so um, 
What was my first pattern was a question on Facebook that I released. The first pattern that I designed to release, I probably designed some before. So when I lived in Iceland, I actually owned a couple of quilt shops. So I started owning quilt shops and that's where I started designing. My first pattern that was officially released in the United States was called the Braid Runner. Well, it is called the Braid Runner because it's still available. It's a quilt as you go table runner. It has sold, um, I think over 150,000 patterns. Yes, it's still selling. It paid my mortgage for years when I was starting out. It was uh, kind of my bread and butter pattern. Still a good pattern. It's a really good pattern. Quilt as you go table runner. And um, yeah, so that was my first. All right, and then uh, another question was about binding, how I do binding. So I do usually do binding by machine. So I sew it to the back of the quilt, I flip it to the front and I stitch it down by machine. So all by machine. I, I just, it's a, it's a time issue for me mostly, but also if I am making a quilt for a baby or for something to be a lap quilt or something to be on the couch and something needs to be washed a lot, that machine binding is gonna be stronger and hold up better than a hand-sewn binding. Now I do hand-sew binding sometimes on my really special quilts where I have the time, but uh, that is my favorite. And if you wanna know, if you wanna learn about my technique, I have a video on binding. So on my website, one of the tutorial videos is machine binding, how I do it. There's many ways to do it and I'm, mine is not the right way. I just did a video on how I do mine and it works for me. So feel free to check that out. Um, what does Jack mean? What does Jack mean? Ooh, he's right here. Jack the Ripper. It's your seam ripper. It's just a nickname for, for a seam ripper, Jack the Ripper. So, Jack and Bob. Remember that comment <laughs> from the sew along? All right. Any other questions? Are you looking on YouTube for questions? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, oh, so. Shelly asked, what was the name of the quilt pattern that you used for your grandson's light years? I didn't quilt it, so I don't remember. It uh, was Kim, she quilted it, and Cars Quilting. She did a post in Gudrun's Quilt Crew, so maybe just look for that. Um, you can, there's a search bar in the crew. You can look for specific things. I don't remember exactly what it was. Maybe somebody that is watching um, remember, remembers what it was. Any books for quilt as you go? Do I have books for Quilt As You Go? Yes, I sure do. I have um, one that I did with Martingale that is called Learn to Quilt As You Go. Unfortunately, I'm out of it and Martingale hasn't been, hasn't been open because they're based in, in Washington State. So I haven't been able to restock, but I will. But I also have a series of books, Fast and Furious books. So I have th two of them are in print right now. It's Fast and Furious Family and Fast and Furious Home. And so both of those have multiple Quilt As You Go projects. I also have a number of um, single patterns and of course the Fast and Furious Club that is a video and a pattern that, I, that comes out every month. So that's on, all on the website. All right. Um, will there be another quilt sewing day? I had a blast. Will there be another quilt sewing day? Oh. <laughs> uh, I knew that was going to come up. You never know. I, my mind is always running. And um, so one thing I will say, one thing I will say, I, of course, like, as you know, I travel and teach all over. So I am booked really pretty tightly year round. And so, of course, uh, all of my travel kind of came to an abrupt halt in March, early March. And so all of those guilds and shops where I was supposed to come and teach though all of those gigs have been canceled and since I am booked I was I'm booked way into through 2021 so there's a domino effect happening of cancellations and asking for rebookings and I'm not booking anything I'm not rebooking anything because I we don't really know what's going to happen and how long we're really going to have to uh, have social distancing and honestly a classroom for quilters there's no way to keep uh, that I can be six feet apart from you and, and really have a successful class however as you know, videos provide a whole different angle and you can get up real close and have interaction as well. So I am working on some things to 
possibly be able to honor some of those, at least my lectures with the guilds and maybe possibly come up with a solution of online classes and things like that. So I'm working on some things. Do, um, do I hold retreats? Yes, I do. In the fall, I do uh, a series of retreats here at home, 10 minutes from a house. And there in October, beginning of October, we have three sessions scheduled that were all pretty much chock full, sold out a long time ago. And hopefully we'll be able to still do that. And um, we will see, we'll see what happens with that. But um, I'm always, my mind is always going. So there will be some things, trust me on that. Now, I have saw one question, a couple of new Stripology users that were having, you know, they were using their rulers for the first time for the Hope Quilt Along, and they had, um, were chipping a little bit away at the ruler when they were putting their blades in. So, uh, a little tip. So, first off, those of you who are new to the ruler, I have a series of videos called Stripology 101, and there's a part one through six, I believe. And that's a great one to watch because especially the first part, it shows you all those little critical things. So like angle in your cutter when you put it into the slit. So don't push. So when I'm talking about angling the cutter to put it in the slit, just drop it in. Don't push it in because if you start pushing it in, the blade is going to chip away at the ruler um, because of course the, your blade is sharp. And But it's don't worry about it. I got a question if it's going to make my cuts bad it's not it's not because it's really just in the teardrop so you want to um, angle the cutter into the teardrop drop it in and then before you put pressure on make sure you make it completely straight before you cut through because you can't bevel it if you bevel it you're you're chopping away at the ruler so make sure it's completely straight completely perpendicular to your um, cutting mat so that is uh, one of the really good tips and it's 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 a little bit of a learning curve if you're new to the ruler don't worry about it you will get it you will get it um what kind of, well what oh that was another question what kind is my sewing machine my new one is a baby lock solaris and that is kind of the top of the line uh both sewing quilting and embroidery Embroidery is something that I've never done. It's totally new to me, but I'm really intrigued with it. And, and uh, I see some possibilities that I would like to explore. So that's why I got an embroidery machine. No, I'm, I'm totally fish out of water. So like I said, I need a couple of days in my sewing room with um, some videos to learn all that. But I'm excited. I'm excited about that. Are you originally from Iceland? Are you, what was the question? Are you originally? Am I originally from Iceland? Yes, sorry. I am born and raised in Selfos, Iceland. Best town in Iceland, of course. Speak some Icelandic. Uh, oh, she wants me to speak some Icelandic. No, I just said that. Oh, you just said that. <laughs> okay, I won't do that then. Um, so another question is, I got, a, it, <laughs> I got a question about if I would ever think about designing my stickers as a vinyl and not a sticker and so there's a reason why they're stickers and not vinyl so there are some ruler markers that are vinyl and that's the that was the spark that made me design these is because the vinyl when you're cutting a lot of fabric you know all the dust that comes off your fabric we're all pretty used to that there's a lot of dust that you create when you're cutting fabric so when you have vinyl markers and that dust starts to collect they start moving. So that's what really sparked me to make these because I was using those and then as I was using the ruler, they weren't in the right place because they started moving on me. So I wanted something that would stay in place, you know, securely until I moved it. So, and also of course, not leave any residue on your ruler, no matter how long you left it on there. And you can still reuse them a few times. So that was my spark to design these. So that's why they're not vinyl because these work better. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then I was asked about fabric design. If I had ever thought about designing fabric because he loves my color sense and how I put together fabric. Well, I did that a long, not a long time ago, but I designed 14 fabric lines. Oh, Mr. Producer, would you hand me that stack over there? I have to show you. So my friend Doug Lico, 
that was our get one of our guests on the show. He we talked about that his mom used to own a quilt shop, and no, um, the roll that Doug sent me and that other fabric. Oh, right there, and the the big hunk underneath it. That that's the one I want. Yeah. So he sent me this package right before was just last week, right before a sew along, and it was a hunk of fabric that is designed by me. So they had had this as a kit. Let me do the overhead camera so you can see it. They had done this as a kit in the store. This line was called Mementos. This came out probably 2008, seven or eight. And so I was really surprised because I haven't seen this fabric for a really long time, but he sent me all of this and I don't know what to do with it now. And they came with um, all of this too, but only a couple in here were in the line. This was in the line and this was in the line back then. But um, this was back in the day. Back in the day I designed fabric. So 14 lines of fabric. And even though I designed fabric, I always like to sew with everybody's fabric because I'm a fabricaholic. I can easily say that. But um, will I design fabric again? Maybe. You never know. Right now I'm just loving what I do. I'm putting together bundles from everybody's fabric. Um, okay, so we have time for some few more questions. Oh yeah. Oh, let's see. Uh, the other, somebody asked me if I were, I would do more little patterns. Yes, of course. My little patterns are really fun and addicting too. So there will be more little patterns. Do you ever come Oregon? Do I ever, ever what? Are you ever coming to Oregon? Am I ever coming to Oregon? Well, my son and my grandbaby live in Portland, Oregon, so of course I'm coming to Oregon. I was scheduled to teach for a guild in Salem, Oregon in June. Unfortunately, probably not going to happen. But um, I've been there a few times and, you know, I go where I'm, where I'm booked. So who knows, but I definitely go there a lot to see my baby when I can. I miss him so much. Um, okay, there was another question on um oh some of my favorite parts about the f uh, pattern design process my favorite part about the process is probably i get giddy when an idea is turning out to be a really cool one and so that's my really favorite part when the idea is really coming together and um also then you know same thing when i've got my blocks done and i'm ready to lay them out that's my favorite part of the sewing process when I can just lay it out and uh, see it really come together as how I envisioned it. And what is somebody asked, what is the least favorite part of the design process? Um, <laughs> sometimes because I do it all, because I also write the patterns, I uh, make, I do all the illustrations and all that layouts and all of that. Sometimes that's not super fun when I'm doing um, intricate illustrations that can be sometimes a little painful, but you know, it's all a part of the process. How can I purchase the jelly beans? Oh, how can behind I? You. Oh, somebody's asking about the runner behind me. So, this is um, Spilled Beans Table Runner. This is a quilt as you go table runner. It was our Fast and Furious project for March. So you can go to um, my store and you click on shop. There's a Fast and Furious Club. It's in there so you can purchase it individually. Um, so it comes as a downloadable pattern and a video class. So I take you through all the steps of making it. So it's only available there for now. It's really fun. Made with uh, charm pack and some background fabric. All right, let's see if we have a couple other more questions. Okay. Um, do I test my designs? Absolutely. I have testers. So every design gets tested um, three times usually, sometimes more. I'm the worst tester, even though I sew it many times because I start off trying to follow the pattern, but the pattern originally came from here. So sometimes the quilt top is done and then I realize, oh, I didn't even look at the pattern. So that's, I'm the worst tester. So yes, I have, I have great testers. I love to have um, different, different types of people, people that, you know, kind of um, read differently. Some people like to read the text. Other people like to look at the illustrations and um, really kind of dive through it. Also like to have test, have it tested 
by people of different um, skills. So sometimes I love having people that are newer to quilting, but are still detail oriented, test my patterns. So yes, I have a slew of testers uh, and then every, every pattern in the books also gets tested. That does not mean that things don't slip through because they do, unfortunately. It's, um, it's always gut-wrenching, but it happens. Um, do, okay. Do you do any hand sewing like cross stitching? I used to back when I was younger, but it's a time issue. I, it's not that I don't enjoy it. I, I do, but it's just, I don't have time. So I enjoy machine piecing more. So I, I do that probably if I do have that extra time, I'll, I'll be doing that. Uh, somebody asked me about other hobbies other than sewing. I never answered that. I think <laughs> I remember that now. Um, so I, I was a runner back in the day, so I like to work out. Uh, I have not been able to run much the past few years. A couple of issues, I developed, well, I developed an allergy to exercise, the weirdest thing ever. I'm not gonna talk about that, but um, that, and then just some joint issues, not been able to run as much as I want to, especially lately. So getting old, <laughs> that's not fun that and i love to cook and i love to make craft cocktails so that's another uh way to be creative i think can lefties use your rulers can lefties use my rulers oh absolutely the beautiful thing about the stripology rulers is there's not really any adjustment needed for left handers or right handers because you're just moving your hand down the ruler you're not moving the ruler and so um, some of the things are actually easier for lefties because for example those first cuts are easier for a left-handed person and if you're ambidextrous you can start and switch hands and go 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 it's totally jealous if you can do that and um, the only adjustment for a lefty is is uh, the numbers are going from left to right from zero to 20. So um, just if you follow the numbers, it's an adjustment that takes just a day or two to adjust to. But yeah, all of you lefties that use the rulers, just tell, tell them how, how um, it's great. It's great. No, no adjustments needed. All right. Oh, here's a question about you. <laughs> what does Mr. Honey Producer do when he's not putting your shoes together? That m must be shows together. <laughs> put her shoes together <laughs> he does not put my shoes together but my shows he has a lot of different jobs they um back in the day he was always called many hats so we call him many hats around here too he still produces he's still working in his music and he works for um was a trainer too and worked for fitness and always with music so he's always busy i put him to work too <laughs> take out the trash take out the trash <laughs> That's the biggest thing. Okay. Um, all right. Somebody's asking about some hints about the new book. Well, there will be hints. Not quite yet. I'm just kind of, I, I know the idea and all that. And um, there will be lots of stripology quilts. There will be lots of different pre-cuts used. And of course, perfect for bundles and all that stuff. Using the trimmers and all kinds of fun things. So it'll be good. It'll be good. Um, <laughs> when is the next sew along? Well, no plans, no plans. Let me, let me catch my breath. I do need uh, a little bit of a breather. I need to work on this new stuff. So, uh, somebody was asking about, oh, where did you meet Mr. Honey Producer? <laughs> this is getting personal. <laughs> All right, we're checking out. Oh, he wants to end the show. Um, no, I actually walked into his gym. So that's how we met. And so the rest is history. Rest is history. It took a few years until <laughs> until a date happened, but um Anne is asking, will you be in Houston in October? I that's the plan. But we don't know if there's gonna be a show. That's the other thing. So it's a plan. It's a plan. All right. I am scrolling way. I'm not caught up on these. Lots of comments, lots of comments. Uh, what computer program do you use when you design quilts? I do everything in Adobe um, Suite. So I do Illustrator and then I lay out my patterns in InDesign and all my, um, all my photo work is done in Photoshop. So those three. So I, I don't use EQ. I, do, I design the line drawings in Illustrator. 
or design my quilts there. Um, oh, hints on. I think Gwen was somebody was asking. I still don't have the hang of sliding the ruler to finish cutting the seven on the ten inch square. So when you're doing hope, you start the cut and you can't finish all the way. Remember, I did this in the video. It's better when you have a stack of squares. So you start your cut and you cut your other two, and then I removed one stack of triangles. So when you do that, especially if you have if you're cutting a few at the same time, you know how the slits will kind of drop down and create a little ledge. So when you remove the triangles and then creates the ledge, you can easily slide it up and really stay um, in place. And then you just slide that cutter in. Don't push too hard on it where you've already cut. I just slide it in on the top and just finish. So um, not a big deal. And as you saw how forgiving the pattern is when you square it up. So even if it's a little crooked on that end, don't worry about it. It'll all, it'll all be cleaned up in the trimming. All right. So I'm going to scroll. I'm way back in these comments. See, how do you keep so motivated every day? How do I stay motivated every day? Oh, there's so many ideas to try. There's so many quilts. Cool, there's so much fabric and, uh, yeah, you got to keep looking at the new fabric. And I think that's our last question because I want to show you some new fabric. <laughs> um, so our fabrics, I wanted to give you an update on some fabrics because I've gotten emails about um, some of these bundles that I showed you at the end of the sew along, the gypsy sole and the hummingbird. They disappeared in, um, in minutes. They sold out in minutes. So update on that. I'm getting more of both. So I'm getting more of Gypsy Soul and I'm getting more Hummingbird this next week. So they will be listed next week. I'll let you know. Uh, I'll give you probably maybe an update on Friday, definitely next week, Tipsy Tuesday. And then also a couple other bundles that sold out really quickly was Botanic Garden by Louis and Irene and Tea Time, that blue and white fabric line. Those are both in the house and they're on the website now. Kids are folding and I'm cutting them right now. So they'll be ready to ship tomorrow. So they are on the website right now. Just want to tell you that. And we have one brand new bundle that is here. And this is also a Louis and Irene called uh, Philosophy. And it's a nautical, really cute line. So I love these kind of muted blues and especially love this because this is not woven it's a printed um stripe so i love a printed stripe and then we have more of that print and we have seahorses and we have uh, conch shells and some more boats and i just love this kind of a really soft nautical feel here's that um, stripe in another color and the seahorses and the stripe and here we have that print again and some a little bit of that seafoam green and then um, some coral to tie it all together the seahorses I love this so this is a fifth also a 15 piece bundle because I didn't want to break up the line so that's the full line from Lewis and Irene it's just kind of uh, really great so there are 15 pieces in this this bundle so this is also on the website right now and um, then we're also getting a lots of lots of fabric for the one yard. So they will be updating um, this week for, for the rest of the week. We just don't want to update it until we have it ready to go. So we're working on it. Lots of uh, one yard fabrics that came in. Also, if you like the brightly blooming behind me, I have another set of bundles for that coming because they also seem to disappear so fast. And since I used it in my quilt, um, a lot of people have asked for that. So sometimes when we reorder bundles, there might be one or two of the SKUs that, that sells out. So usually I replace them. Um, but so for example, the Botanic Garden and, and um, the one that came in, I think there might be one SKU less. So um, in those, but it's they're really we're, we're getting it um the other hard thing it's hard to get fabric these days just so you know but i did get a shipping update on the scandy so the scandy is coming i just don't have a delivery date yet and i don't know exactly how much is coming so just so you know those are coming and hopefully we'll have an update on that 
definitely next week and hopefully sooner. So that is really exciting. And um, something else I wanted to talk about. Oh, we got to choose our live winner. Live winner, live winner. Let's see. Judy Russell, congratulations. You have won a $25 gift card to the GE Design Store. And then we have our giveaway question. So you can also get another chance to, to win. And so here's my question. Have you named your sewing machine or machines? I told you my name of my, my new one, my Solaris. Her name is Sola. So uh, I love naming my things. <laughs> Somebody asked in the, in the sew along, do you name everything? And it's just so much more fun. It's like having people around when you name everything and it's easier to remember. So I do, I do name a lot of things. Um, all right, so that is it for our show today, tonight. I hope you have a really nice rest of your Cinco de Mayo and maybe have some chips and salsa or maybe a little tequila, who knows? But of course, I will be here next week for Tipsy Tuesday. That will be uh, May 12th at 7 p.m. Now, if you're in the crew on Facebook, I will be live this coming Friday. And of course, with a different and brand new cocktail in hand. So hopefully see you then. That one is at 3 p.m. Central Time. And um, that is it. I hope you enjoyed the show tonight. And of course, somebody asked if they could go back and watch that slideshow and pause yes because the shows are saved you can go back and watch it again and pause and really look at them but thanks for being here tonight i'll see you next time mm -hmm.